been with St. Stephen's since February of 2002. Street outreach is essentially like we're working with uh, folks that are staying outside. St. Stephen's has, in the Twin Cities Metro, always kind of had the reputation of serving the hardest to serve clients out there. Founded in the 1960s, St. Stephen's is renowned for their efforts to end homelessness. St. Stephen's regularly receives awards and accolades for its work. But while the organization is well known, its employees stay mostly behind the scenes. Workers quietly struggle with huge caseloads, low salaries, and the secondary trauma that comes from working with people in crisis. Sometimes there's 50 calls a day, you know, just for me alone. Sometimes there's, you know, there's more, and I can't be in, you know, um, more than one place at a time. You run the risk of being burned out, um, especially if you're having to work second jobs on top of this. It's important that you are able to take care of yourself, but if you're really fighting for making rent every month and things like that, it, it makes it harder to decompress. Across the board, in the world of housing and homelessness, there is a high amount of turnover in the jobs. There is a lot of burnout. Because you're dealing with trauma a lot of times all day. You know, they, they talk about secondary trauma. I mean, you know, it's, you get a heaping helping of it every single day at, at St. Stephen's. When those numbers are up, something has to give, you know? So if something is given, are you truly given the quality of service that you state that you, that you are? The staff at St. Stephen are on the front lines of the Minneapolis Metro region's affordable housing crisis. Home prices are the highest they've been in decades, rents have skyrocketed, and construction of new housing has not kept pace with the number of people moving to the region. Without a doubt, there is more people who are looking for shelter than shelter beds available. Uh, the actual need for housing and, and help with that kind of stuff is just blowing up. And it's now coupled much more with the opioid crisis. Especially in the nonprofit world, uh, and because it's in large part uh, functions on donations and grants and other things, the possibility of wages increasing is made by the executives within the nonprofit without much consultation of the frontline staff. Our cost of living is going up just as fast as the people we serve. In late 2018, St. Stephen's employees began to meet informally to discuss workplace conditions and ways they could address the many problems they experienced. It was a couple case managers that reached out to me and we kind of met at a bar talking about like, yeah, we really, we really should have a union. I finally had a co another co-worker now, Nick, that's in place, I'm with me. So I've seen a lot of people come and I've seen a lot of people go and there was someone close enough to me now that I, I that I knew clearly would hear me, and I'd want to see what happened to so many other individuals happen to him. The people that I talked to were mostly other on-call staff, but then uh, I also, you know, just communicated to the recruiters uh, within the St. Stephen staff uh, just some of the benefits of my experiences uh, going through uh, participating in the union at. Uh, the county and, and working with AFSME, who represents us at Scott County. Everyone's kind of talking within their departments, but then also it's it was a great excuse to kind of talk to people that are outside of your department. This type of work, people have pretty good class understanding. We deal with systems all day, every day, and so to explain to somebody, yeah, there, there's a reason why your pay hasn't increased, and there is a way to fight that system. Uh, it's like, yeah, that makes sense. We were already kind of moving, but then Ask Me really kind of helped guide us across the finish line. St. Stephen's held their NLRB election on July 24th and won by a landslide. 80% of workers supported unionization. 88% of the St. Stephen's workforce voted. We won, and then uh, that was actually the night of the overnight pit count. So, <laughs> you know, called some people, texted people, and then went back to the office to get schedules for the trains ready for that night um but it was a nice nice start to the evening yeah we got into this together we did the vote together we worked together on a daily basis and i think that uh is really the way that uh, the saint stephen staff operates 
In September, the newly formed St. Stephen's negotiating team sat down with management for their first round of contract negotiations. When else are you going to be across the table from, oh, it was a lot of our, literally our managers, and when, do you, when else do you get to say no, and then we're going to come back and talk about it, like you will separate instead of being told no and then stewing on it in your, you know, with your coworkers in the cubicle. People had to form to get things in place, you know? I, I, you know, there's the saying that, you know, you know, power is not you know, given, it's taken. You know, and, it, and, it, and sometimes it's taken in the form of saying, hey, let's get together and, and put action behind what we're, what we're saying here. That's really what I'm hoping to get out of this, is that we create a place that people it's not a stepping stone. It's not a thing you do to cut your teeth. It's like, this is the place where you stick around. If you want your community to be dignified and caring and, and providing for those citizens, it's really important that those uh, employees get the resources and the compensation that they deserve. But when it's all over and said and done, I'm not worried about a shrine behind me in terms of you know, what, I, what I've done, you know? What's more important to me is my purpose. Was I, you know, following and, and working behind what I, I believe that my purpose was in terms of, you know, um, being here.